What's up my people and welcome to the SN95 Power Channel. So if you're new to this channel, let me first say thank you for checking us out and I hope you stick around. Let me um, just break down something real quick. This channel is all about the fourth generation Mustang, AKA the SN95. So just to let you know that every Mustang built from 1994 to 2004 is a SN95. Yes, so even new edge Mustangs are SN95 Mustangs. I don't wanna go into that right now and I don't want the new edge police to come knocking at my door. So let's just get what we're here for today. Today, we are going to continue the discussion on um, which engine platform is best from the SN95 lineup for your build. Now, in our last video, we talked about the Essex 3.8 V6 motor. Um, I think the V6 uh, 3.8 motor is a strong platform to build off of, but when it comes to efficiency, dollar to horsepower ratio, it's, it's just not cost effective. You really have to throw a lot of money at those motors to um, get them to what I consider fast. Now, fast is relative. You know, fast to me might not be fast to you and vice versa, but um, I just think it's not a, a good platform to um, throw money at. So now we have three engines left. We have the Pushrod 302 small block Ford. This motor was available from 1994 um, during the SN95 production life, 1994 through 1995. After that, the um, 4.62 valve motor, the mod motor, first mod motor in the Mustang came into, um, into play. And um, that motor, like I said, was available from 1996 through 2004 during the SN95 production life. And finally, we have the 4.6 dual overhead cam, four valve modular motor. That's a word full, a mouthful, which was available from 1996 to 2004. All right, let me just pause it right here and let me explain. I am trying to expand um, as they say, my channel's portfolio. I'm trying to do a little voice over here. And um, let's, let's just continue. I just wanna give this a little try. So here's the point where I'm going to lose some friends. We all knew that the 3.8 motor was going to be the first to go, but what I'm gonna say right here is gonna cut some people deep. You cut me deep, Shrek. In 1996, Ford produced the 4.6 four valve dual overhead cam motor to the Mustang lineup. It was the first time Ford used that motor in a Mustang, and they put that four valve motor in the 1996 Cobra. The 1996 through 1998, quote, B head Cobra produced 305 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 300 foot pounds of torque at 4,800 RPM. It had an aluminum block made in Italy. Cylinder heads had four valves per piston, and it had a swirl port design, the cylinder head, which, um, gave the airflow a high velocity. Now, the B-head Cobra was fantastic at the higher RPMs, but it lacked a little uh, low-end punch. That's the reason why Ford put those intake manifold runner controllers on them. But, you know, as Mustang guys, we are intuitive. And we knew that those high-velocity heads would benefit for, from forced induction. So, what we do? We started boosting them. Honestly, if I was to build another uh, four valve motor, I would build a, a B head motor. Now, we'll save that topic for another time. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are like yelling at me right now <laughs> saying, why would you build a, a B head motor instead of a uh, C head motor? But we'll save that topic for another time. In 1999, Ford introduced the new edge refresh. 
and that came with some motor improvements also. The 1999 Cobra had an improved 4.6 dual lubricated motor, which made 310 horsepower. Wait, wait, what? Wait, wait, let's, let's, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. All right. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Wait. Ford said the 99 Cobra made 320 rear wheel horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 317 foot pounds of torque at 4,750. That was a lie. Well, Ford lied about that, and we're just going to slide right over this part of SN95 history and talk about the 2001 Cobra. The 2001 Cobra made 320 horsepower. It also sported an aluminum block, but had revised cylinder heads to help that low end torque that the B head suffered from. So I know what you're saying. Why is the four valve motor eliminated? First off, I'm not going to include the 0304 Cobras in this um, contest because <laughs> it's one of the best platforms you can build off of in the SN95 uh, platform. Um, and secondly, cost. Like the other four motors are far cheaper and far easier to obtain than a Terminator motor. Non-terminated motors are great motors to build off of. Now, let me say this again. Like, everybody has their way of modding their motors or building their motors. For this segment, we're talking about power adders to these motors. And I'm talking about adding an on 3 turbo kit to these motors. Hey, let me say, I, I'm a fan of four-valve motors. I've built three iterations of um, four-valve motors. But what we're talking about for this right here, I'm just talking about getting an on three turbo kit and sending it. Yes, you can mod these four valve motors with botons. There's a catalog full of botons that you can put on these four valve motors. But the cost effectiveness of adding cams and pulleys, headers and all that, um, the, the cost to horsepower isn't, in my opinion, it's just not worth as opposed to just buying a on three turbo kit and throwing that on there. The good thing about these four valve motors is you can push them all day long at 450 rear wheel horsepower. It has been proven time and time again that these motor lasts under boost at 450 rear wheel horsepower. So what's the downfall of this four valve motor? For me, it comes down to availability. So you, you get an on three turbo kit, you send it, and you throw a ride. What I would do is I would head to the junkyard and find another four valve motor. Problem with that, you're not gonna find a Cobra engine at the junkyard. But what you can find are Mark 8 Sand Lincoln Aviators. But here's the catch with that. Mark 8s are becoming harder and harder to find at junkyards. At one point in time, I was able to go to the junkyard and I would see three or four Mark 8s up in there. I wouldn't see a single V8 GT. Now it's the opposite. I can go to the junkyard and see three or four GTs at the junkyard, but I won't find any Mark 8s. It's just, you know, um, small shelf life, not that many so. It's kind of the same case with the aviators. Aviators would make a, a great um, loan block to build off of, you know, to throw a turbo kit on. You know, it's got the latest revision heads, Great motor to go to the junkyard and get. Problem is, if you can find a Lincoln Aviator. Now, I can say this. I'm seeing more aviators at the junkyard than I do uh, Mark 8s. I don't know if, if people are just aren't aware that the aviator had the latest uh, four-valve motor outside, you know, the Forge um, internals. But I don't know if the word is out on the street yet. Um, if you knew about that, leave a comment down below. Tell me if you knew aviators had a uh, four valve motor with the, the latest uh, revision C cylinder head. You know, honestly, that's that's really what it comes down to for me. Like I love four valve motors. The first mod motor I built was a, um, a forged Mark eight um, aluminum block Eaton swap. <laughs>
went to the junkyard and it was a half price day. So I um, pulled the motor out of the junkyard. I stripped everything off of it down to the long block, got it home. I sold the B heads, I um, sold the crank and everything. And I just really wanted the aluminum block. Took that aluminum block, had it machined. And um, I think through like SVT performance or something like that, I pieced together a basic uh, Cobra bottom end. I found the eight bolt crank. I found the H beam rods and the um, the piston. So I used that as like my foundation, my building block. It was a Mark Eight motor. So let me just let me just say this: if you have any of these, if you have a four valve engine, I don't care if it's a B head or a C head, and you throw a on three uh, turbo kit on it, you have the potential of having a 10 second car. The reason why I say potential is because, you know, on paper you can build your motor to have 500 horsepower. And, you know, if your suspension, tire, if all that stuff isn't right, you know, you can struggle to get into the 11 seconds. But if you do throw the on three turbo kit on a four valve motor, you have a car that runs 11 seconds all day. You'll have a car that's fun on the street, that's um, pretty reliable, pretty damn reliable. Like I say, you can, you know, of course you don't want to put a bar boost on it. You have to play around with what, what kind of gate that you'll put on there. but you know, six, seven pounds of um, boost, you know, should get you right around that 450 horsepower range. And you heard plenty of uh, feelings out there on the streets. So like I said, I'm not knocking four valve motors. I just think uh, because availability, that's really the downfall of the four valve motor. So don't beat me up too bad on this, guys. Like I said, I'm not knocking four valve motors. I don't know how many times I gotta say that because I don't want y'all coming at my head talking about <laughs> I'm trashing four valve motors. I think they're strong and reliable motors, but they're just hard to obtain. So what do you think? Leave a comment down below and tell me if you agree or disagree. And if so, why or why not? I just want to make this clear because, you know, the last segment that we had about this, I had a lot of guys commenting, but we're only keeping this to engines that were production based out of the SN95 platform. So um, don't comment about Coyotes or LSs or any of that stuff. I mean... That, that can be for another subject, but this subject, we're just talking about the 3.8, the 5.0, the 2-valve 4.6, and the 4-valve 4.6. Also, if you're running a stock block 4-valve motor that's boosted, leave a comment down below. Uh, let us know your combination. Let us know how it's um, handling boost, what kind of boost levels, and would you recommend boosting a stock block 4.6? All right, so with the four valve motor eliminated, we have the two valve mod motor and the push rod 302 motor. Make sure you click the bell, tell a couple of people about the channel, you know, all the normal stuff that I always say and all the YouTubers say. But if uh, this segment is interesting to you, then make sure you stay tuned and, you know, do whatever you gotta do to get notification when I drop the, the final. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell you um, why the next motor didn't make the cut and then I'll explain why the last motor is ultimately the winner. So I appreciate y'all time and God bless.